there are two questions which are asked always uh, in the pathophysiology of ischemia and hypoxia the tissue that is most sensitive to hypoxia is is it neuron uh, a brain uh, or nerve cell nephron in the kidney or is it cardiac muscle or hepatocyte and the other question tissue that is most sensitive to ischemia again is it the brain or neuron um, nephron in the kidney or cardiac muscle or hepatocyte the answers are different to these two uh, questions let's try to understand why the answers are different the tissue that is most sensitive to hypoxia is brain the neuronal tissue uh, within 3 minutes of hypoxia it can uh, or rather after 3 minutes of hypoxia there is irreversible damage to the brain whereas the tissue most sensitive to ischemia is cardiac muscle so let's try to understand why the answers are different let's see hypoxia hypoxia in whichever part of the body in whichever organ or tissue first loss of hypoxia is uh, mostly is the failure of sodium potassium pump now this pump as we are all aware a major chunk of atp consumption in most of the tissues is by the sodium potassium pump in under resting conditions of metabolism most of the tissues they uh, spend almost 40% on the activity of this pump but in the case of neuron it's as high as 70% most of the neuronal activity would depend on the activity of the sodium potassium pump and its uh, normal functioning because sodium potassium pump is going to create and establish the concentration gradients for sodium and potassium and these two ions as we are aware are needed for the action potentials impulses to be transmitted through the nerve the only functioning of the nerve neuron is to convey the action potentials and therefore sodium potassium uh, ions concentration gradients are critical and therefore the point is neuron uh, is most dependent on the activity of the sodium potassium pump among all the tissues of the body so whenever there is hypoxia there would be failure of the sodium potassium pump it would be the first to be hit and as a result of that the sodium will accumulate so uh, sodium is to be pumped out by a uh, sodium potassium pump if it fails sodium accumulates within the cell and if sodium accumulates within the cell by osmosis it will pull water into the cell the cells will swell and the, the cells will burst so therefore if there is failure of sodium potassium pump within those 3 minutes of hypoxia the nerve is likely to undergo irreversible damage and therefore this is most sensitive to hypoxia remember because of the fact that sodium potassium pump is most sensitive to hypoxia and the neuronal tissue is most dependent on the activity of the sodium potassium pump compared to other tissues uh, dependent on this pump so uh, that's uh, tissue injury and tissue irreversible injury re uh, resulting in the death of the tissue uh, after hypoxia now let's try to understand the effect of ischemia what's the difference Uh, between the effect of hypoxia and the effect of ischemia why would it be different let's try to understand let's first see how is it that the blood supply brings oxygen into the tissues we are talking about the ischemia so it's the loss of blood supply um uh, first thing 20 ml of oxygen is carried by every 100 ml of arterial blood when it reaches tissues most of the tissues they extract about 5 ml of that oxygen coming into it most of the tissues extract 5 ml that means the oxygen utilization coefficient for most of the tissues is 5 on 20 and that's 25% 
remaining 15 ml of oxygen would go back in the venous blood. Therefore, this oxygen utilization coefficient by other name is also called as arteriovenous oxygen difference. Arterial blood has 20 ml, venous blood has 15 ml. The difference between the two is 5. Now, oxygen utilization coefficient for most of the tissues 25%. That means most of the tissues have a lot of reserve. Most of the tissues if they demand, if their need for oxygen increases, instead of 5, they can extract 10 ml, 15 ml. So, they have a good reserve for oxygen. What is the case of heart? Coronary artery, let's say, brings 20 ml of oxygen in every 100 ml of the blood. When it reaches the myocardium, myocardial cells, the myocardium the cardiac myocyte extracts 15 out of that 20 ml. That means the oxygen utilization coefficient in the case of myocardial, myocardial cell or cardiac myocyte is 75%. 15 on 20 is 75%. What is the meaning of this? It means heart is already extracting maximum amount of oxygen coming to it under normal resting conditions of metabolism. When the heart is beating under resting conditions, it is extracting 15 out of 20, the 10, 20 ml of oxygen coming to it, 75%. That means there is a certain amount of ceiling to its oxygen extraction. Remember, uh, if the oxygen need increases for the heart, Heart does not have enough reserve. I mean, if the oxygen need goes on increasing, the demand for oxygen goes increasing. Beyond a certain limit, heart cannot increase its oxygen extraction. Already extra it was extracting too much. I mean, maximum. So, see this. If the oxygen need increases in the myocardium, in the cardiac muscle, and if the blood flow does not increase proportionately, linearly in the corresponding fashion then that means heart is going to suffer heart will be the worst sufferer of ischemia therefore because if oxygen need is increasing and if the blood flow does not increase in the corresponding fashion then there would be an oxygen lag and heart would be the sufferer and therefore uh, ischemia worst sufferer is the myocardium or cardiac muscle because of this reason it has got poor reserve for oxygen as compared to the other tissues therefore blood supply obstructed decreased and then heart will suffer